If you have an RV, one of the things that you need to do periodically is to change your anode rod in your water heater. Now in this video, I'm going to show you how to remove one that is frozen on, it's completely rusted shut, it probably hasn't been off in 5 to 10 years. And I'm going to show you how to get it off. This is severely corroded. I'm not sure I'm going to get this off. 1 in the 16th. So the first thing is to just try. Put on the wrench and see if you can get it off and see how frozen it is. And if it's really stuck, well then we'll go on to the next step. So I'm going to spray some penetrating oil in here and the longer this can soak the better. But I'm going to just try it and see if I can get any progress at all. First I'm going to try and work the bolt to the left and then I'm going to try and work it to the right and see if I can get any slack at all. And I know it seems counterintuitive to go to the right, but I'm trying to break it free. And once I get it free, then I can unscrew it. All right, after about 10 or 15 minutes trying that, it didn't work. So now it's time to get out my torch. Now what this does is when you heat the uh, uh, one that's frozen, like a bolt or an anode rod or something like this, and then that is when it, it's going to expand and contract different than it will on the outside. And a lot of times this can break the seized threads and allow you to get this going. But be very careful when you're using a torch, especially around propane in your RV. So I'm just going to do as little as I possibly can. All right, it's still stuck. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change wrenches and I'm going to use this 27 millimeter long with a, a hex head and get directly next to the anode rod. Well, I finally got it free, and let me explain why that worked with this new tool. So I've tried unsuccessfully uh, to get it off with a, a 1 and a 16 socket and an extension, even though I had a breaker bar. And I don't want to go too much because if you ever round those corners on your the, the socket head there of the of the anode rod, if you round them, you're just you're done. And so what I did was. This one is a multi-point, and I think, I don't know how many are in there, but this is not a real good one for uh, trying to break uh, a stuck rod like that. So you want to do one like this that has fewer, and this is going to grip better, and you're going to have uh, more surface area. And the second thing is this is longer. Now, I couldn't find a 1 and a 16th, so I got a 27 millimeter. And if you notice, then I wouldn't need the extension any longer because I can put the breaker bar right here. And the issue with a really long extension when you've got a, uh, you're trying to use a breaker bar is you're going to get flex and twist in here and it's going to be harder to break it off than it is to do something just as close as possible to the actual head. And so when I finally put this on and used the same amount of force, I was able to get it off.
Now this particular water heater has a really narrow anode rod and so I found that if I got the hose and put it on jet I was able to just work it into that hole and flush out the bottom of that tank. Now normally you can buy a wand that goes directly into the water heater but this one is too small and but I was able to effectively get a lot of the sediment out of it. So anyway, this doesn't actually be, seem to be that bad. Uh, there's some corrosion at the end, but most of the rod is intact. So I'm going to go ahead and put this back in. So I cleaned up the threads with a brush and rinsed everything off, and then I put on Teflon tape. And be sure and do all these steps before you put any rod back in, because the last thing you want to do is have to go through this procedure again when it's all rusted shut. So anyway, I hope you found that helpful, and I'll see you next time.